Standards without raising prices. How refreshing. By New York Life. With the right guidance, everyone can be good at life. And by your local Toyota dealers. Toyota, let's go places. This is the first sellout since the final game of 2009. The students surrounding Lawrence Joel Veterans Memorial Coliseum just prior to the start of this game. Danny Manning led his Kansas team in 1988 to the national championship from this area. So happy to be the head coach here at Winston-Salem. Here is his starting five along with Dukes. Brought to you by Food Lion, Woods, Crawford, Collins, Arians, and Mittaglue. Allen, Kennard, Jones, Tatum. And it's important that Emil Jefferson not only be healthy, but ready to go as the uh, rim protector for what has been an issue from a defensive standpoint for Jeff Capel's team. I talked to him before the start of today's game, Jeff Capel, 41 years of age, now the interim head coach for Mike Krzyzewski, who they hope to get back in the not too distant future. And I do mean within a week or two, perhaps, that soon. The idea is to play better defense and protecting the rim with Jefferson is gonna be a real key today because it was a layup drill for Mark Godfrey's club at Cameron the other night. Yeah, you know, to not a lot of teams go in there and score over 80 points, so they've gotta get that mindset and mentality back. And this is, uh, frankly, a Wake Forest team that can score points in bunches. So they're, they're still growing as a defensive unit, but they can score the ball. Danny Manning is concerned about straight line drives, a beautiful hustle play off the tip as Woods makes the play and gets the deflection to give Wake Forest the first possession of the game. The problem for Wake Forest is limiting the straight line drives that Duke will take to the basket. That's what they've become, sort of a four out team that likes to drive it to the rim. A lot of teams go into that set they're in right now where they're across all across the free throw line and that sets up those driving lanes. Out there this time for Crawford, quickly on the other end, Kennard gives it up to Grayson Allen. He's been more of a facilitator this year. It's not an easy transition either. I mean, he was a primary scorer last year, and uh, they've asked him to, to do more of the ball handling and distributing. Kennard gets a bump, and the foul is called by Ted Valentine. Our officials, Tim Nestor, Ted Valentine, the veteran Raymond Steins, as well as... Austin Arians, the senior out of Wisconsin, transferred from Wisconsin, Milwaukee, picks up the first personal. Jefferson straight to the rim, as we told you, and he gets it to go, and it's 2-0. Well, wow, he's, you know, he's got a little bit of a quickness advantage right there, and uh, that's part of his game that's expanded over his time at Duke, the ability to put it on the floor from about the free throw line. There's a nice dump down, Mittaglue. Off a beautiful feed by Keyshawn Woods. He's put on a lot of weight from last year. Used to be that quintessential stretch four. Now they want him to be more of a true big forward, and he's gained some size. Tatum, not there. Tapped out, and finally retrieved by Crawford. Look at him go down very quickly. Knocked away, out of bounds. And it will be controlled to Wake Forest. Let's get our Carolina Ford keys to the game, G-Man. Well, this is, this Duke team needs a mental health win, and uh, no better place to get it on the road where they haven't won in the ACC this year. One of four teams there. And Wake Forest, they've got to finish out games, play 40 minutes. Uh, they, Clemson made a 15-0 run of them at the end of the game here, so they have been giving up some leads. Well, Middle Glue made a nice move and then short-armed the little hook. Allen on the other end gives it up. And Tatum receives it on the dribble handoff there by Jefferson. Strong move by Emil. Count the basket. Goaltending will be the call on John Collins. Well, well, so far, it's been uh, Emil Jefferson who's been the matchup problem. They gave him a clear out on that side, and Mittaglou hasn't been able to stay with him with the lateral movement. You saw this uh, Wake Forest team at Syracuse the other night. They've been close in a lot of their losses. Five of them in conference play. That one won't go for Arians, and it's run down by Jefferson. You know, I, I say that, you know, you look in the standings, you never see CL. You know, there's, <laughs> yes, never, right. there's, there's not a key, you know, column for close losses. Indeed. <laughs> Just ask Brown Brownell at Clemson, right? Yep. On the other end, Crawford. Strong move by Bryant, and a whistle underneath. 
Well, you're looking at two teams who are four and five in tempo in the conference, so they're going to be looking to push both ways. And this is just a quick end-to-end -end transition by Wake Forest. Luke Kennard got the foul. And Crawford at the line. Silver Spring, Maryland, Gonzaga College Prep. Highly regarded four-star player coming out. One of the young guns that really could turn this program around is Danny getting closer and closer to having his entire group. And McClinton is about the only holdover from that, yep. that group. And now I believe we may have had a lane violation, so an extra free throw coming, and that got the attention of Jeff Capel. He's not at all pleased about it, barking a bit to Teddy Valentine. Well, you know, Tim, at the start of this, start of this game, this is kind of reminiscent of right in the prime of the Skip Prosser era, the crowd here, the atmosphere, the you know, sellout in the afternoon. A very difficult position for Jeff to be in. It has been really, really problematic what you've been hearing off of the floor with Duke of late. And there's an offensive foul that goes against Kennard. That's two very quickly against him. And that'll force Capel to go to his bench right away. And this is, you can't let him go left. So you see, you saw it right there, and it wasn't against the guy who was guarding him. He, he actually got mid-glue on that play, it looked like. And that's a, that's a big hit early on for uh, Duke. They were leading scorer, just under 20 points a game, having to sit out for a period of time. See John Shire there talking to Kennard as he sits down. Well, alley -oop for Mittaglou. Gets some space and is rejected. And then is fouled underneath, and Jeff's really hot. He is really hot. And he's close. Raven Sion is standing right there. And... Uh, and they're going to have to get him restrained. Nate James goes and grabs him. Well, we talked about what Mittaglou has been trying to do, carve out space, and you know, they thought that was a foul. Yeah, well, that was a foul. Uh, yeah. I know Jeff wants his team to play hard on the defensive end, but that was clearly a foul. That may be the issue for Duke. Can they play well without fouling? As Collins takes it inside, and yet another bump, and he is not in a good frame of mind. That's already four team fouls, Mike. Uh, Frank Jackson picking that one up. They're, uh, they're, I, I, I did a game here, Tim, and, and a number of years ago. I don't know if you were with me. It was one of the weirdest. It was a Duke game here, and all five starters fouled out. I was here. Yeah. yeah. I'd never seen I was here. since or before that ever happened. <laughs> yeah. I forgive you for that. You've worked with other tens. <laughs> <laughs> I just don't have a memory. Yeah. The ball is lost out of bounds and wasn't touched, so Duke gets it back. A turnover by the Deeks. And in the half court, and they've, they've tried to get out and run a little bit, but they're really trying to pound away in the paint. They're doing their best to uh, put a good face on, but you could tell. I went into the locker room earlier, and you could see the frustration. Jeff always affable, and... But it was, you could tell, it's been a rough week on the Blue Devils. Allen from downtown, and he drains it. Yeah, it was, you know, it, just, it, looks, it looks like he's carrying the weight of the world yeah. on his shoulders, and you just want to see that fun and that verve come back from him. And, you know, maybe almost go back and take a look at that national championship <laughs> game in the second half. Yep. Strong move by Collins. Count it. And the foul. Well, what a talent this young man is. Right. Yeah, he's uh, he's had a little trouble standing on the floor with power with uh, foul issues, but that was a good strong take inside. A lot has been asked of him, stepping up for the production offensively that Devin Thomas left behind. As he gets better defensively, his ceiling for success is just through the roof. On the other end, Jackson gives it up. Gets it back. Splash. You know, you look at Jackson, and he had a terrific start to the season. He scored double figures eight of his first nine games. His minutes have dried up a little bit since that time, but he is a capable scorer. Ian Jones are playing a little two-man game there. 
Collins again. That's automatic. You got to check him. Well, you know what? It's I always say it's it's not the it's not the play. It's the players who are you know making the play. And you put Crawford Collins in a two man game. That's pretty tough. Little floater won't go. Fought for, and I think Collins will get the incidental contact. Wrong place, wrong time. Foul against John. A lot has been asked of Jeff Capel, and to those that are asked much, much is given. Screen that time he gets to finish inside, but watch this next play. Instead of rolling to the basket, a pick and pop, shoots the jump shot. Now he's shown he can do both of those things. It makes it very tough to guard him. Now they are really working hard to get him free, and again, the Achilles heel for this Duke team this season, it's defense, or lack thereof. Too much space being given. Jones can't get it to go. I think we may have a clear out foul that is spotted. Are they going to whistle Collins? Uh-oh. That's two on him. Horrible news for Danny Manning's team. Well, now you got two of the biggest stars who are sitting on the bench right now with two fouls in Kennard and Collins. One each for Duke and Wake. Well, I talk about an equalizer. Collins really upset about it, too. Jump hook that will not go for Harry Giles. Highly thought of an injured Duke Blue Devil. But so much of the Duke issue of chemistry is based on all of the injuries that incurred this club from the moment a lot of these stars were brought in by eight, Mike Krzyzewski. Yeah, eight of, their, eight of their top 11 players have been injured at some point in time. They've had eight different lineups that they use, and it's kind of waiting. And Giles needs to have that one breakout game to really get his confidence going. Well, it's pretty evident we've got a tight whistle today. Keyshawn Woods is going to get caught clearing out with that left arm. Yeah, this, is, this is by, you know, this is a veteran crew and uh, referees that have worked in the ACC tournament finals. Yeah, and they're going by the boards because they know they want to go deep into the NCAA tournament as well. Freedom of movement is an issue, and there's yet another foul. This one against Giles, his first. Well, so highly thought of and just really hasn't played that much basketball. It's almost been two years, yep. Tim, since he's been out on the floor and, you know, a glimmer right there against uh, an NC State with eight points and seven rebounds. The jury is still out, too, on, you know, two ACLs is two ACLs yep. in three years. You know, how will he develop now that he's got some time to play? Moore lost it. Morell Moore, the young man from Locust Grove, Georgia, who's been Seeing quite a bit of playing time. Another fantastic recruit for Danny Manning. Out of, uh, you know, another prep school that's known for its basketball. It's 10 to 8, Duke by 2. A lot of stoppages in play of late. Allen rejected, but there is the follow by Giles. Yeah, that's, uh, that's exactly the type of basket that he needed. And uh, we talked about um, Grayson Allen being the facilitator. Also, the Dudes are starting to lessen a little bit. I think they're, <laughs> the crowd got in their licks early. Yeah, indeed. Brandon Childress is coming to the game. They're very pleasantly surprised with uh, how well he has played this year. And Mitchell Wibbleton has come in too, Mike. He's been outstanding off the bench. And there's Moore with a strong slam, the 7-1, 265-pounder. That's, you know, it's, they are not deep up front, uh, but they are very long. Oh, that was quick. A very quick shot leads to a run out on the other end and another foul over the back. This one by Moore. Yeah, you can't give him an angle in a lane like that. Giles got caught out of position. You have to go for the front or uh, you give him an angle and that's what's going to happen. Moore, by the way, picked up a foul. So the two front line players on the back end now, each with two. Both John Collins at 6'10 and Moore at 7'1. Saddled with two fouls early. So right now, if you're if you're Duke, they're kind of a green light special going to the rim if you want to, but they've had some early jump shots. Yeah, they're settling on them. Jones. There's another flush by Giles. So far, the best offense for Duke is putting it on the 10 and letting your teammate go get it. My old coach Larry Brown said, you make your mistakes on the rim, good things can happen, and uh, so far it is for Duke, and Giles has been terrific early on. Boy, admittedly, got a second chance, largely because Jones fell asleep trying to bring in a rebound. You know, and Danny Manning said, this is the first 
this past summer, the first year in like four or five years where he had the summer completely off. He wasn't playing for his national team, so he was able to hit the weight room. I think we've got a moving pick called on Duke. It's going the other way on Grayson Allen. He's looking with Mittabu going for the block right there. There was nobody to put a body on Giles. He just followed him right to the front of the rim. To that foul on the moving pick by Grayson Allen moments ago, a little Wolfen went down. You know, he gets it everywhere he goes, and not just from the fans. He also gets it from his opponents. 14 to 12 the score, just over seven minutes gone by. Beautiful pull up by Wilbekin. That's a two just inside the arc. And he's, he's the calming influence on this team, Tim, and he actually relish is coming off the bench he, he enjoys it his minutes are still pretty you know pretty high at uh, 25 a game we've seen what Brandon Childress and Wilbekin can provide when they come into the game already 16 fouls as that foul was given up by Jason Tatum I beg your pardon Childress Duke triggers it in Allen lost it, had it knocked away by Wilbegin. It's amazing how that young man has responded, Mike, to coming off the bench. Mitchell Wilbegin. Uh, you know, as, as a junior, too, you know, there were some guys who would say, you know, you know no, I'm really, you know, want to start. But he's uh, unselfishly accepted that role and embraced it. Tatum rattles it home. His first bucket, and the Devils lead by two. Back and forth we go before a sellout crowd here in Winston-Salem. Arians. Well, see, that's a situation where Tatum should have the advantage defending Arians, being quicker than him. You've got to drive him off the three-point line. Well, the amount of space between the shooter and the Duke defender has never been wider. And Allen going to get the benefit of the block this time as he was making a straight line drive against Wilbekin. Timeout. Deacons lead it by one. It's going to be a lot of fun today in the ACC. In the NBA, we narrowed it down to four players. A couple of them hurt, but you get our drift. Duke's Brandon Ingram, Justice Winslow, Jabari Parker, or Wake Forest, Chris Paul. All of that coming up at halftime. Vote now at the ACC.com slash live. Vote. Well, it's going to be it's going to be interesting to see everybody waiting for that Clipper team to break yeah, out yeah. and uh, and come out of the West to see how they'll gel. They played well without Blake Griffin last year, who Jeff Cable coached at Oklahoma, um, but they need their full complement. Grayson Allen at the free throw line. Well, there's been a lot of conversation, obviously, Mike, about his being more aggressive and a player like him especially on that 2015 team could play with a lot of reckless abandon it does seem more than anything else not just the distraction of the tripping issue but he's been more tentative on the floor as a result that's what I've heard that I actually believe the other stuff is a lot of hyperbole but I do believe he's been more tentative since coming back yeah I, I wouldn't disagree with that at all and uh, you know maybe part of that is is being asked to be a little more unselfish as a passer instead of being a scorer. Duke's lead is one. Wilbekin off the heel, and it's pulled out of there by Matt Jones. Tatum looking for a little help, and we'll give it up to Allen. Clearly, this is a team without a prolific point guard, and that's a walk. On the drive to the basket by Matt Jones. They actually had Wilbekin on Emil Jefferson, but they couldn't find him in in the low post. Four playing around one on that offensive set. Now Jeff Capel coming back with Kennard. Remember, he has two fouls at this point, so he's going to have to be a smart, maybe see if Duke zones a little bit during this stretch. Pre-conference and early conference, Kadari probably played the best basketball of any of the Duke players. Oh, not even, not even close to him. And that three ball will not fall, and it's Kadari that brings it down. And he's, you know, he's having an All ACC type season. Jones 
Working with Jason Tatum. A clear out for him as he drives again, and that's an offensive foul. Very easy call to make that time. Number one on him. And we talked about the, you know, there was an early discrepancy in fouls, but it's evened out. Both teams are, you know, we're not going to be shooting on that, but both teams are in the penalty right now. Wilbekin on the deck with Greg McClinton, number 11, also on the floor. Darians. Woods. A smaller lineup for Wake Forest, but Ar Arians plays small. Yeah, you know he's he's gotten inside a good offensive rebounding position that time. Brian Crawford, who had the rock, used the ball fake to get the foul from Jason Tatum, his second. And that's how that's how Danny Manning's going to build this team. He talked about through recruiting and through grad students. Yeah, and that's the route that Arians went to get here to. Uh, take uh, take his final year of, year of eligibility. We see so many teams Absolutely. are doing that now. Well, you got to do it, I think, to compete in this day and time. Everyone's got an influential grad student transfer. The 2017 New York Life ACC tournament heading to the Big Apple. The ACC giving you a chance to win and come to enter a win and travel voucher, hotel accommodations, and tickets at the acc.com slash VIP. I was talking to Steve Wojciechowski and had Marquette and Villanova a big upset of number one earlier in the week. I said, which direction do you want to go? He said, I want to get old and stay old <laughs> with my program. Uh, it's like, you know, it's like uh, Jim Laranega down in Miami, that same type of philosophy. Mike Bray at Notre Dame. But that was a, that was a, I was a very happy for Wojo. That was a terrific win. It was. That was a brick, a bad shot that leads to a run out. And then just poor ball handling by Crawford. So a real break for Duke right there. We don't often see bricks on layups, but no. we, had, we had them on both ends that time. Canard can't connect. Crawford pulls it down. It's clearly a much more energetic team with Crawford out on the floor. Arian strong to the basket. Not there. Good defensive work by Jefferson. Throws it right back to the wrong guy. Yeah, he never saved the ball under the other team's basket like that. Woods tried to save it, and he did to Grayson Allen. A lot of movement with very little production for both teams the last few sequences. That three ball does not fall for Jones. Boy, they're settling on quick jump shots. Yeah, there, was, there was still about 20, 21 seconds left in the 30-second clock when that one went up, and there was, you know, there was, there was no rebounding presence there. Giles has been their best offensive rebounder. He's out on the floor guarding Midigler right now. Again, both teams taking them pretty quickly. Bryant Crawford now has missed three in a row. This is a drought for Duke that's lasted almost three minutes, but Wake has not taken advantage as the iron has been quite unkind to them as well. Duke two of eight from three and Wake one of six. Allen from three. And it's pulled down by Mittaglou. Constantinos call me Dino Mittaglou. See if we see a possession with more than three passes for either club. There's the fourth. There's an open shot. And a very weak effort by Crawford. They're going to call a push. Uh, yes, they are going to call one, aren't they? I think it's on Jefferson. How about that? Well, today's coverage of ACC basketball broadcasted on AFN, the American Forces Network. We welcome the nearly 1 million men and women of the U.S. Army, Air Force, Navy, Navy, Coast Guard, and Marines stationed around the globe in 175 countries and on the high seas. Happy to have you with us. Hope you're enjoying our broadcast. So now Duke, uh, Duke with three guys with two personal fouls and Kennard, Jefferson, and Tatum, three starters. And now they're making sure that Jackson sits and waits for the opportunity to come in after the free throw as you see Austin Arians at the line. And he's got some terrific numbers too, Tim. 47%, 40% from three, and 90% from the line. And this has been a very good Wake Forest free throw shooting team in general. Jackson does re-enter after the missed free throw. Jack White also comes into the game for the first time, number 41 for Duke. Crawford sits down. 
for Wake Forest. And that's, you know, White pressed into uh, action just because of the foul issues. He's only played in eight games this year. Darrell Moore re-enters, and he's playing with two as Arian sits down. Last field goal for either team was four minutes ago. The 12-0-1 mark. Allen. Uh, it's got to be a walk. I tried for that European step right at the end. There have been moments, but they've been few and far between. What's been quiet, Grayson, is offense for both teams. 20 to 18 win. Inside. It's interesting, Tim, you look at uh, when they have those things. Rarely do those guys talk about X and O's. Like Tony Bennett talks about the five pillars that he builds on. And, yeah, uh, yeah. you know, you could, see, you could see the core values of that each of the co coaches hold dear. Some debris got out onto the floor. I think it was from the Duke bench, actually. One of those little bouncing balls that's uh, out there. Maybe it came from the crowd, so they're going to have to make a uh, public address announcement to the fans. If that, if hold that, on to your all to your rubber basketballs that you have in your. Uh, if it happens again, I mean, it could, could be a technical. Could be a technical yes, foul. Good. Yep. They've been yep. warned. Came through the Duke bench area and then was given back. We are uh, sitting in our. Uh, Air-conditioned sauna above the uh, arena here. Not quite as high as you'd be at Cameron. Woods drains it. 22 to 18. And let's see what Duke can do. They've missed their last five field goals. You see this run now over that period of time. Pull-up jumper for Jackson. Ooh, and the iron kind. For the young man from Utah. Yeah, he's, a, a, he's again, he's got a little bit of attitude in him. Solid defensive player on in the perimeter. Yeah. And, uh, in this first half, because of foul trouble, you've had, had other guys on both teams step up. Little stop and go, Childress. Oh, using the window, waking up the echoes of his dad. That's on that staff of Danny Manning's Randolph. And a lot of it's, it's tough to play for your father. I mean, Tony Bennett did it with his dad up at Wisconsin Green Bay, but, uh, you know, he gave the young man a lot of credit to come here and nope. want to play. Get to see Pops every day. Nice move in by Jackson, but he's uh, knocked away. This does remind me a little bit of uh, Randolph, the way he played. Yep. No, it's uh, had that uh, one of the great ACC tournament performances of all time right there. And uh, he was uh, he was kind of it was I really credit Danny Manning for keeping him on staff when Jeff Bezdelic left. It gave some uh, little yeah. continuity and a little history to uh, you know to what's going on here at Wake. I'll never forget when Randolph hit the shot against Grant Hill, and the scores table at Cameron Indoor gave him a two when it was really a three. All of us were wondering, including Dan Bonner and I, who were calling the game that night, Mike, why they would. Uh, you know, hurry down and take a shot. It was because Grant knew it had been a three, not a two. Childress got that win, one of the biggest victories in Wake Forest history on the road in the ACC. Doesn't seem like it was that long ago. Mittaglou looking high-low for more down there. Nothing doing. And they got White now a little undersized trying to guard oh, I mean, I... How much space are you going to give a guy that can knock down shots like that? The Woods at 45%. Do you want to try to run him off the three-point I mean, line, Mike? Make him a driver. I mean, that's got to be in the scouting report. Kennard answers with a tray. 27 to 25, his first bucket from downtown. Yeah, this uh, this Wake team is very flexible, Tim. They can go small. They can put some size out on the floor. And he's close, isn't he? Yep. Woods with a runner. <laughs> Ooh, that's pretty good. He's got seven, and he looks silky smooth doing it. Uh, Double-figure score in 15 of his 20 games this year, and uh, just been very, very solid. Kennard got up in the air with that pass, almost picked off by Childress. There's a little bounce in the step of these reinforcements coming in. Guys like Woods, Childress are really making a difference here. Yeah, just, uh, you know, forced to back off him a little bit on that play and then that sets up the drive going left 
And a steal off the inbounds. Arians to Crawford. Too much French pastry in that attempt. And the loose ball is taken down by Duke. And Duke is how many times we talk about the uh, end of the half. And this is a critical five minutes. Oh, don't you see that? Darrell Moore with a little hands of Velcro. Outlet to Woods. He misses a chippy. <laughs> well, we've had some guards for Wake Forest miss some layups. And there were only three by Matt Jones that time. That's got to be a foul. Almost thought in watching that that Jackson wanted to take a blow and commit a foul so the action would stop. That's his second. A couple of outstanding defensive plays, but neither team able to take advantage on the offensive end. Duke now with four players, Mike, with two fouls. Yep. Four. They're going to be in the double bonus practically all day if that continues. And I know well, the emphasis. I know the emphasis all week long from Jeff because we we spoke before the game was on defense, you know. But you got to play it without fouling. No, that's you know slide your feet and uh, don't put yourself in trouble. More importantly, don't put the other team into the bonus early. But uh, you know the the one I would worry about out there is Tatum is a freshman. You know I think Kennard has the the savvy to play with you know two personal fouls and the the upperclassmen know how to do that. But you just worry about a freshman's ability. Crawford extends the lead to six. That's the largest of the afternoon. Just under five to play. Tim Brando, Mike Jeminski here on the ACC Network. Tatum to Grayson Allen. You know, you have no problem with that shot. It was a great rescreen. It was a down screen, and then he came back and curled on it. All coming out of the offense. Off the ball. Like we had an arm bar working there. Bolden. Yep. First foul on Marquise Bolden. Freshman from DeSoto, Texas. DeSoto High School. Was not productive in the game with North Carolina State. Actually started in that game. Yeah, That's when they were still kind of tinkering with the lineup. That's when Kennard and Grayson Allen were they came off the bench to start that game. He's another one that was hurt at the beginning of the year with that left leg. Missed the first eight games. A late pickup during that magnificent recruiting class that came in. An offensive rebound off a missed free throw for Wake. Crawford stop and go. Hello. How do you do? Yeah, see that and just the you know great spacing that time by Wake Forest. And there's there's no rim protector out there on the floor right now for Duke. So they're gonna really have to rely on help and taking charges. They got a mismatch, but Grayson's gonna take the three anyway. Kennard was matched up against Wilbekin and they missed him. He still is. He had him down low, posted up a moment ago. And that's going to be a foul on Wilbekin. Very little he can do with the size differential other than pick up the hand check. And that's his second. Well, it's beginning to heat up there in Winston-Salem. Suddenly, it's the nylon song being played. The Devils and the Deeks on the ACC Network. 41 remarkable years, four decades worth of coverage of ACC sports. Bob Harris, the voice of the Blue Devils, being recognized here at Wake Forest. It's a lovely farewell tour throughout the ACC for Bob, and I know uh, you know him very, very well. I've been, I've had the good fortune of getting to know him through the 30 or so years I've been. You know, you know how long he's been doing it. He called my game. Yeah. <laughs> you know, and I remember, yeah. I remember walking in to the uh, Big Four into the Greensboro Coliseum my freshman year. And I looked around and I asked Bob, I said, do they sell this place out for these games? And he just started laughing and he says, you'll see. And guess who that first game was against? Uh, <clears throat> the Deeks? Yeah, the Deeks. The Deeks. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. He's a wonderful guy. We wish him all the best. And I'm certain that he's got a tremendous rooting interest in a deep run into the NCAAs this year. He's had so many of them. There's more in traffic. Quickly doubled and a foul. 
Yeah, there aren't many. Uh, there aren't many play-by-play -play guys, unless you're Alabama football, who have gotten to call nine national championship games. Tim. Second foul on Bolden. You're right about that. You can get a little greedy too. I can tell you. Eli Gold, I've known for a long time as well, the voice of the tide. And and trust me, announcers can get greedy when their teams are uh, performing well in uh, championship time in both sports. Bolden takes a seat. All of a sudden, this uh, this game, I talked about the finish of the half. It's just teetering on getting a little out of the out of control for the Blue Devils. But, uh, and Waits doing a lot of it at the free throw line. Very good ex execution. They're nine of twelve now from the line. You see the free throw shooting discrepancy. You're absolutely right. And the other problem Duke has is that they have not been a shutdown defensive team. Yeah, you can trade baskets all you want. Allen hits another three. That's a couple of them for him. He's got 11 on the game. But on this end of the floor, you're giving way too many Wake Forest scorers too much room. And, uh, and six of Grayson Allen's shots, seven shots have been from behind the arc. Oh, look at that. Crawford, beautiful drive again. Not able to get through. There was some defensive help that time that impacted that shot. Arians leaves the game. Brandon Childress has come back in for Wake Forest. He's joined by Woods and Crawford, Mittaglou, and Moore. Kennard. Jefferson with a nice offensive rebound and a good ball fake by Allen. Not this time. You know what's through all this may be as aggressive as I've seen Grayson Allen and looking for his points That's in a, a point. long time. Crawford. Stayed with it, took it right to the chest of Jefferson. He's got 10. Allen feeds Kennard. And look, and Wake seems to have, they were really determined to push the ball up the floor. They've been much more aggressive. In traffic. Jones, not there. Woods with the outlet. Well, he did have a size advantage inside with Childress, but uh, unable to get that jump hook to go down. They're trying to sniff out those mismatches in the paint. Woods on the wing. Well, the ball reversals alone are creating wide open looks, and it's 40 to 31. Talked about it this um, this Wake Forest team uh, scoring the ball has not been an issue this year. Duke defending has been an issue. And we're on pace for them to give up another 85 to 90. As was the case against NC State at home against Cameron. Cameron. Kennard. Well, you got to give it to him. He plays tough. He'll take it into the timber every time. And I think that's Moore picking up the foul his third. Sean Woods uh, just under 13 points a game and uh, showing his whole arsenal. Solid from more than solid from three at 45 percent, but uh, that, that sets up the drive. So very diff diff difficult to guard him. One of the things we've got to say, Mike, and we'll, we'll talk about it at halftime. We look at other scores. Florida State riding so high, going to Syracuse, lose today. Notre Dame goes to Georgia Tech. Uh-uh. Yeah. Another big win for Pazner. Oh, by the way, five and, five and four. I'd say give him the coach of the year trophy right now. Yep. Give it to him. On a, on a sad note, I was shocked to hear about the death of Charles Shackleford. Yeah, so I mean, it, was, it was 50 years old. Yep. Your thoughts and prayers are with him and with his family. 30 years ago, he led North Carolina State to that last ACC tournament championship that they've ever had and under Jim Valvano. A last hurrah, if you will. In Landover, Maryland. I happen to be there for that. Nice strong move by Crawford. And again, too easy to get to the 10 against Duke. I don't know if I've ever seen a Duke team give up as many layups. Out there for Allen. Jefferson throws it up. Uh, Giles thought he was going to get fouled yeah. on that play, which is why he put it up in a hurry. Yeah, that was Giles, not Jefferson. Jefferson just checked out of the game. And we've got a timeout. The lead is 10, largest of the game, and it's all happening before the break, yep. which is Jeff's worst nightmare. Yeah, and uh, now you know, as he's talking, uh, giving a little defensive lecture to uh, Harry Giles. 
But you're uh, you're right, Tim. I mean, it's just getting broken down off the dribble with ease. Well, the Ram Power Play is brought to you by Ram Trucks, Guts, Glory, Ram. Last Saturday against number nine, North Carolina, Boston College's Ty Bowman. He was on fire. The freshman scored 10 straight in the first half to tie the game. His final basket in that stretch, a thundering dunk. The Heels would go on to win a close one. You were on hand for that. Bowman ended the day tying his career with 33. And that, Mike Javinsky, is our Ram power play. Ram trucks, yeah, I, I guts, did, glory, Ram. I, I did that game, and Ty Bowman is going to be a very good player. But uh, look at the last four games, that one and three record. Opponents, uh, three-point shooting, minus seven rebounding, trailing at the half. Other than a twilight zone and second yeah, half. Yep. Yeah, I think what the Miami game could have been. <laughs> exactly. No question. That was a twilight zone second I've never half. Said, I've never seen anything like that. You know, especially if I'm a Jim Laranaga coach team, just a complete meltdown in the second half. And uh, just the energy that Duke brought in the second half. Doesn't happen for Childress this time. 3.3 left. Well, coming up on the Hardys halftime report, time for your vote. What former ACC player is currently making the most impact in the NBA? Duke's Brandon Ingram, Justice Winslow, Jabari Parker, or Wake Forest Chris Paul. You can vote now at the acc.com slash vote as we tally the results. So stay tuned for the Hardys halftime report. Speaking of Jimmy Laranega, by the way, uh, I wanted to make a point of this, is that 35 years of Raycom Sports broadcasting ACC games. This happened back in 1992. Remember this? I mean, it led to what would be an historic regional final victory against Kentucky when they decided to draw it up to the middle of the floor. This time, Leitner stepped out. But you know what happened on that pass, Tim? Grant Hill threw a curveball, and it, it went to the sideline. Of course, the iconic pass was dead straight, and all Leitner had to do was, you know, all he had to do was have cap off a perfect game with at the end of the clock. But, you know, I think, I don't know who was more worried about that. I'm sure Grant was more concerned about <laughs> making the pass than Leitner the shot. Last shot time, and it's Giles at the buzzer. Not there. By the way, we were talking about Laranaga's team giving up that second half to Duke. Well, they certainly answered the bell against North Carolina today, winning big at home. We'll be talking about that, plus a lot of other games in a crazy ACC Saturday. Duke, no field goals in the last 314, trail by 10. ACC basketball is being brought to you by your local Toyota dealers. Toyota, let's go places. By Hardee's. By PNC Bank. And by Haviland, official motor oil of the ACC. Your resident hot dogs, Brando and Jaminski, back here for the second half of Wake Forest and Duke. Quit popping off. <laughs> <laughs> Speak for yourself. There you see the young Deeks. By the way, Collins, we should point out, only played four minutes due to two early fouls as we're underway in the second half. Crawford was the story with a dozen to lead the way. Duke's problems on defense were evidenced early, and quick shots like that don't always help, although Allen does have a pair of threes in the scoring column. Yep. Wake uh, switching up a little bit, going zone that time, forcing the jump shot. Woods looking down low. Collins felt the bump, could not convert it. Mitaglou was blocked out beautifully that time. I Tatum. Well, Danny Manny trying to get uh, Collins back into some rhythm, get him an early touch or two on the, in the paint area, see if they can get him into the flow of this game. Oh, well, Tatum got called for palming the ball there by Teddy Valentine. So yet another turnover. Seven offensive rebounds leading to two put-back points in the first half for Duke. You have to convert at a much higher rate than that, especially on the road. You know, if you, you know, at least half, if not over half, you know, you should have uh, six to eight points if you're going to get seven, seven offensive rebounds. In a lot of ways, as good as Wake shot, most of those opportunities were layups. But it could have been worse had Wake shot better from the perimeter than it was in the first half. And think about the two or three layups they missed in transition. That's right. Too. Shot clock down to 10. 
Jones fires over to Kennard, and he knocks home the tray. Very patient on that offensive uh, set that time, and you know, Kennard tried to go. They're, they're forcing him to the right hand as much as he can, so he had to give it up, but then he just ran to his spot on the three-point line. I'll say this. The concern that Jeff Capel had defensively was with Collins. Foul difficulties had something to do with it, but Jefferson's also doing a nice job on him as well, not doubling immediately. That time he gets through. That they may start doubling more quickly if he can do that. He's got six that now. Was, that was kind of a half double, and they waited until he put it on the deck before you do it. I think they're going to have to come on the catch pretty quickly because Kennard just didn't get there in time. Jones. Jefferson kept that one alive, and it's out of bounds to Duke underneath their own hoop. Here's the look, and this is the one guy, you know, that they will throw the ball into and uh, mitigate to a degree, but you see that late wave coming in, and it's just not going to get it done. Woods leaves the game, and Wilbekin checks in for him. So you suspect they may be a little more immediate, and another turnover committed by Duke. The veterans this time, Allen and Kennard can't connect. That's the 10th committed by the devil so you would think now we might see a more immediate double team huh? yeah if if not on the pass in then on the catch I mean, you could do it three different ways uh, you know when balls in the air you know when it arrives at the post player or on his first dribble now Jefferson's going to get a push prior to the entry into Collins and that's the third on Emil Jefferson now they cannot afford to lose him that's his that's number three on him yep. So they're going to come in. Harry Giles actually gave them some good minutes in the first half. But, you know, Jefferson is, he's the, and talking about defense, I mean, he's the middle linebacker for this team. Yep. I mean, he, he's the communicator, and he, he barks out all the signals. Collins gets through off an inbounds that's got to be in the scouting report. He's got eight, four in this half. Uh, the thing you hate as a coach is that direct pass for a layoff of, of, up for, uh, underneath out of bounds. Allen knocks down the three ball and a quick timeout. 14 in the game for Grayson. But he's going to need some help from his friends, especially on the defensive end. For Dame, Clemson goes on the road. Pittsburgh's really struggling. Syracuse gets the win against Florida State. That's got to help the Cues, and you know how important it is for them to make a late run. And Miami takes out North Carolina, and this is how it affects the standings, Mike. Well, I remember at one time, too, Florida State was sitting there at 6-1. and one. They've lost their last two games to Georgia Tech and uh, now this loss as well. So there's going to be a lot of, you know, we could have we could have 10 teams at the end of it all at 500 or right around yeah, there. and maybe 11 that gets in the tournament. First time that would have happened since the old Big East in 2011, which, of course, some of the old Big East makes up the new ACC, and that's a 10-second violation. Oh, Mitchell was by Wilbekin to just kind of lose track of where the uh, where the count was. But a little uh, second half of the ACC cannibalization process is underway. All these teams are really, really good. In the back half, you measure this league from the bottom up, the so-called second-tier and third-tier teams are a lot better this year than they have been in the past. Yeah, if, it, if you thought at this point Georgia Tech was going to be 5-4, and four, raise your hand. Yeah. And then no, <laughs> Josh Pastner wouldn't even have his hand up. Indeed. We were on hand for that first win he got against North Carolina. High off the window, the turnaround for Giles. He's got six, and the lead is down to six. You know, I, I think... And we're talking about it having the game. I, I think, you know, when you have those injuries, and they almost didn't get it over again. Yeah. But for Giles, he's gaining confidence in, in, uh, in, in his knees, and he's looking a little more fresh out on the floor. Give uh, Jeff Capel some credit for the defense going full court there, forcing what was almost a second 10-second violation. Collins keeping it alive, but a beautiful little tap out to Allen. Here come the Devils. He turns it over, just a poor play. Suspended in the air before making a bad pass. And Crawford answers, and one. The foul against Tatum. That's three on Tatum, so that's going to, you know, as you were, I was sitting there looking at the board saying, which of the starters is going to pick up that third foul? And this is what happened when you miss a shot down the other end. It turns into a fast break for the other team. Well, Grayson Allen had no business 
passing the ball while suspended in the air. If you're going to take it that deep, you know, you got to you got to put the shot up. And all that did was just give a, a beautiful turnover and scoring opportunity with numbers for Wake on the other end. Just as Duke was making a run and had gotten a couple of defensive stops. They had cut it to six. That's a five-point swing right there. 15 in the game for Crawford. Kennard, nice ball fake. That's just beautiful. That's good basketball right there. But you know what? I, I think Danny Manning would take that. And uh, what Crawford did was he ran Kennard off of the three-point line, made him a two-point shooter. If he had taken a little slide dribble, he still would have had the three. This 1-3-1 one, one full court pressure has given Wake some problems coming up the floor. But once they're there, it's too easy. And another foul, this time inside against Giles, is second. Timeout, the lead is seven, early second half. Redownload this app at your app store. Play as your favorite ACC team, as Mike does. A free small cheese pizza from Mellow Mushroom for every app download or update for those that have already gotten the app, okay? The Mellow Mushroom pizza is delicious. You get it for free. Oh, I see the iron is uh, a little unkind uh, to the G-Man there. I, I, you know, I thank our, our production crew for <laughs> bearing me on that and showing three misses. I did make a couple during that sequence. <laughs> Pre appreciate that, guys. Uh, that's why Bill Foster was happy to just have you around the top of the key. <laughs> it would have been out of your range. 51-42 <laughs> after the freebies. Duke could cut it to six, went to some zone pressure, got a, one quick turnover, almost a second, but then a five-point swing after a turnover by Allen, and that's going to be another foul. Mittaglou came over before Collins and picked it up. That's the second on Mittaglou. Danos Mittaglou. Well, it's, uh, it's, it's amazing how Tim how he's game has changed so yeah. much. You know, we used to see him out of the perimeter shooting threes. He's a, a lot thinner. He was really bulked up. This is, this is something, this is a way for Duke to kind of claw back in this yeah. game at the free throw line if they can get some things inside make old-fashioned three-point plays. Interesting about Mittaglou, you know, he, he's really the most experienced returnee this season. And, and his, you're right, his game has changed. He was sort of a stretch four. Now with his size, he is playing a bit more down low and with his back to the basket. Well, but I think that little half-court trap is done, too. It's, it's disrupted uh, Wake Forest rhythm in the half-court offense. And the, early on here, they haven't been getting many of those drives into the paint. Foul goes against Harry Giles, his third. Collins got poked in the eye. Boom, right there. So That's imagine, three on Giles now. Imagine uh, those two have had some wars probably in the AAU circuit over the years. Woods, who, by the way, is celebrating his 21st birthday today, number one for Wake Forest, handing it off to Childress. Nice pick from Collins and a blow by. Collins goes to the deck. He's knocked away by Duke. Getting physical, Matt Jones, they're upset with himself for not coming up with that ball. I've been impressed with the way Brandon Childress has played today. Brought some energy to Wake Forest when he's been on the floor. Woods gives it back to him. Beautiful quick dump down to Collins. He's just really tough in there. Mittaglou and he keep it alive. Going back, he got a uh, shot clock violation. The ball never got on the rim, so good defense for Duke right there. there Maybe their best half-court sequence defensively of the afternoon. Tim, that's a, it's a very compact zone, too, so uh, forcing shots from the outside and a uh, good body up underneath Collins to force him to get that miss. Got to give high marks to Jeff Capel with the uh, defensive adjustments he's made here in the second half. You mentioned a moment ago that full-court zone pressure and then the zone on the other end right there had him confused wide open for the three and a beautiful three ball for tatum he's got seven and the lead is cut to four and here's that pressure again woods 
draws the foul. Taking it right at Harry Giles again. And also Jason Tatum. Tatum picks up number four. Yep. And that's that's the difference, Tim. You know, I thought what Wake had been doing was attacking that little half court press and then pulling back. You have to attack that to score, and that's what they did on that play and uh, got the got the foul called because of that. This is admittedly not a, a really good man-to-man -man defensive team. Jeff has done, I think, a lot of changes with his defense. But can you defend without fouling? And the answer to that right now is not particularly well. Tatum with four, Giles and Jefferson each with three. And that's, that's important to a Wake team, Mike, that wants to just drive to the basket. Well, and I think the thing, too, that you can sense it in the crowd a little bit. We've talked about they've given up second-half leads yep. in this season. And it's almost, you know, you've you got to give yourself a little pep talk here mm -hmm. and have the confidence to finish this one. There's still a long way to go. Well, that was another offensive rebound, but unfortunately will lead to an over and back as Collins threw the ball away. Grayson Allen out on the floor with Matt Jones. Luke Kennard, Frank Jackson, and Giles. So the five on the deck for the Blue Devils right now. Pop out to Allen. Kennard. Bingo. Well, this Mitchell Wilbekin giving him too much room. You know, I think he's still trying to err on the side of driving him off the three-point line. Blue Devils are six of eight from the floor in this half. They've made their last five field goals. Arians, not even close, but there's a push against Giles. The freshman from right here in Winston-Salem picks up number four. And he's got to be careful because we talked about this is a veteran crew, and he's getting a little demonstrative, and Matt Jones is getting in his face right now. Yeah. Tell him just calm yeah. down. Because Teddy yeah, Valentine will light you up in a heartbeat. You, you don't need you don't need a technical and give up two points in a game like this and an ill-advised shot. And I don't see I don't know where the you see the foul. I thought Giles probably felt like he was going to get the call coming over the back. Yeah, I, I tell you what, I thought at first glance he rooted him out. You know the derriere, but that was not the case at all. And that was a phantom foul. Arians counted. Nice kick. I mean he. When he gets his feet set from on, on three-point range, and it's like a layup. Spotting up for the three, Jones. He's going to call the foul on Kennard. Yeah, and that would be three on Luke. Four, count it, four on Luke Kennard. So the issues for Duke and foul trouble really mounting, and they're going to have to go deep into their pine. Frankovic uh, getting some run here late in the second half by necessity. He, he too has only played, uh, you know, we saw Jack White early in the first half, and now we see Frankovic, he's only played eight games this year. Yeah, this is uh, not at all the scenario that Jeff Capel and the rest of his staff, Nate James, John Shire, had in mind today. And he's Guys uh, that are averaging no points. Point two, three rebounds, that kind of thing. That's not at all what you need. Jefferson, he's their glue. They really need him. Well, how about uh, how about Jeff Capel going with staying with Kennard in the ball game with those four personal fouls? He knows he's got to have him out there. He's really got the best all floor skill set of any guy out there, and the fans now beginning to feel it that this is an opportunity. Jackson being dogged by Childress. Canard checked by Woods. A pull up. That's why he's in. Counted in a foul. That's why you keep him on the floor. I, I don't know if you disagree with me or not, but I think the whistles have been pr pretty equitable on both ends of the floor. Yes, indeed. They've been quick, yeah. but equitable. Yeah, I would agree with that. There's the look. And, um, and this is a, a left-handed guy, too, driving you down. And uh, Woods got caught with a little reach in. 15 in the game for him. And the lead cut down to four again. This is as vulnerable 
a Duke team has been defensively and with foul trouble, as we've seen. And it, as Mike mentioned, they haven't won on the road yet in the conference. If they can, if they are to get it today, it, it'll be a gut check win, that's for sure. Crawford. That's a block on Allen. It started with a ball fake, and it was a beauty. And now some Wolfen, Grayson Allen getting with it again. And a technical. I wonder if they're going to call a double technical on this. But, yeah. you know, Grayson Allen just has to understand where he is, and it's of his own volition. And uh, he's just going to get called a different way. I don't know if we uh, – I don't know if the first statement made was by the weight player – but I do know what, what was said by Grayson Allen was heard, and that drew the team. And it's always the, it's always the, it's, it's the retaliation that caught God. That was a blocking. That'll be his third with the tech. He does get a technical. Yeah, something was said by Crawford. Yeah. I don't think that was heard. And it usually isn't, by the way. He gets a little something, something in there. But then Allen, retaliating verbally, got caught. Yeah, and those, both those technical fouls offset one another. But still. So there was the, a the, double the, technical. But the thing, yeah. though, Tim, the foul on Allen only would have been his second. That's right. With it's, the technical, it makes it three makes in it one three. play. I don't know that, that they should know, but I don't know that players at the collegiate level understand that that in this game a technical registers as a personal as well but it's been that way and I don't know why they wouldn't already know that so Crawford gets to the free throw line and Allen is forced to the pine yet again this will be the 21st and 21st and 22nd free throw attempt of the game for Wake, and that's where they that's where they built this lead. There is absolutely no denying that the players on the floor against Grayson Allen are well aware that if they can tweak him, yeah, he is already a target. There is absolutely no question about it. He's got to adjust to that. No, no question. And I think it was a good time. Good by Jeff Capel to get the under 12 timeout coming up, get him a time to cool off a little bit. Well, they're certainly going to need his offense, along with Canards, who's also playing with four fouls. He's got the ball right now. Ten to shoot. Beautiful pass inside for a slam from Brankovic. Uh, you know, here's a guy that you know, Wake Forest, you, you get a guy like that who hasn't played, you maybe, you know, he may not even been on the scouting report <laughs> in this game, but you lose a little respect and lose a little concentration, and that's what happens like, to you. Uh, like one of those early Plumlee games, right? Yeah. Back in the day. Woods with a blow by. Poor pass. Taken away by Vrankovic. Gets it into the hands of Giles. He and Jason Tatum. That's Tatum. It's taken down on the other end of the floor and a foul. That's number two on Arian. It's heating up. High emotion in Winston-Salem. The Deacons lead the Blue Devils by four. Ended position when there are changes made in the official tallies by the referees and fouls. But we are sometimes at a loss and the good news for Duke is that Luke Kennard had a couple of fouls that were called originally against him that were changed. Emil Jefferson was credited with one that we know of, and that got him to the bench with four. Kennard now officially with only two fouls. So the decision to keep him in is a understandable one now but with the foul change being made. But again, unfortunately for us, our location is not in a position where when those changes are made that we would automatically find out. You don't have to tell them, Tim. They know that we're at a loss from time to time. <laughs> <laughs> On occasion. You don't have to do that. <laughs> we try. <laughs> Crawford draws the bump as he takes it inside. And should Matt Jones just unable to hang with him there. We should say, too, we'll see how this looms as this game goes on, that Keyshawn Woods came out of that last play limping Pretty heavily. Yeah. We don't want to speculate on what it is. But, Trainers uh, are still he, looking at was, it. He was in pain. 
Trainers are still looking at it. Looks like that right knee or lower leg. As you see, the Brian Crawford shot chart. Yep, just those those two threes from the left side, enough to, uh, you know, make, keep you honest. Keep an eye on Crawford. Working on both legs now. The lead is five with 11 to play, and the double bonus already enacted against Duke. That's going to be a real dilemma for them. Kennard drives baseline, uses the glass beautifully. Now because of that change of the personal foul, Tim, Kennard can be more aggressive going to the rim, not having to work, worry about picking up an offensive foul. Very fortunate, really, for Duke that that was, in fact, the case. Because of the offense that Kennard can bring, Allen's got the foul difficulty with the two, added the technical, of course, a moment ago, and three others for the Devils with four fouls each. Collins. Well, I see Frankovic now. I mean, he can he can work over Collins inside. I mean, he's a big body. He's very athletic, and uh, he's got some fouls to give. First foul on Frankovic. Well, you had to figure that guys like him and Jack White did not necessarily believe that they would be used this early. In today's road game, but White was used in the first half, and Frankovic by necessity here in the second half very early. But lesson to everybody out there that you are an injury or foul trouble away from playing time, and that's why you, you prepare for every game the same way, regardless of who you are on the depth chart. Collins in just uh, 12 minutes of action today, G-Man. Has 13 points. Frankovic had it. Knocked out of the air, and Kennard's got numbers now. Three on two. Jones. Nothing doing. Giving it back up to Kennard. He's made things happen. The offense has run through Kennard without question today for Duke. Well, that's not a three that you necessarily want, is it? Very good defense by Brian Crawford that time. Uh, a contested three, and you could tell that he wanted a drive ball. Childress was uh, a little too forceful that time, too. And that's an over and back. Yeah, he had not established both feet in the front court that time. Both offenses were harried in that sequence. Childress a little bit out of control on one end. And then this mistake. He tried. Well, and here's, the, uh, here's the, the look right now. Second half, Duke 9 of 13 from the floor. Wake 4 of 12. Yeah. And, and yet leading by 4. The wake lead was 10 at halftime. Looks like they got Vrankovic here. Oh, a double foul double here, foul. and that's a bad, that's a bad trade off for Danny Manning because Collins is going to get three. And I think again, the, the physical way that Frankovic is playing him is frustrating him. First of all, he had to sit a lot during that first half. Not a lot of minutes under the floor. Now he's battling inside. I thought that was a good call. Absolutely. And, and Vrankovic's got to be thinking, hey, I'm playing with house money on yep. defense. Yep. This is only my second foul, and I don't score the way Collins does. Two on Vrankovic now. Three on Collins. And he's fronting him. Now that's going to be a foul. And that was a little too aggressive by number 30. <laughs> he put that uh, right shoulder into the chest of Collins pretty quickly there. And, so uh, much for your house money. Now you got three fouls. Yeah, and uh, you know, and Danny Manning did the smart thing. He, they just kept feeding Collins, getting the ball to him. Collins and for a for a young big two, solid at the free throw line with 72 percent. Haviland is giving you a chance to attend this year's New York Life ACC tournament. Airfare accommodations and tickets to every game for you and a guest, all courtesy of Haviland. Enter today at the ACC.com slash Haviland. One of two for Collins. The youngster from West Palm, Cardinal Newman. This crowd needs, it needs something. They're trying to re-energize this team. and They're trying to do it on, on the defensive end of the floor. Bernard on Wilbekin. Well done. It's just That's a, just a mismatch. Yeah, it's a tough cover. It's, it's, you're exactly right. I mean, Kennard can just shoot, but he did a nice job of driving him off the dribble to create some space.
Austin Arians for three. That was deflected. Nice job defensively there by Tatum. Kennard back to Tatum. Well, that was Frank Jackson. Jackson, Jackson I beg your pardon. Yep, Jackson. And a uh, nice, nice little delay by Kennard in letting him get to position. Good deflection there to lead in that opportunity. You can see with Arians, anytime he gets the ball, they are getting out to him and getting a hand up. Nice job by Tatum. Collins. Right over Vrankovic. He's got 16. Hard to believe he's been that efficient. He's only played 14 minutes. He's uh, been 10, averaged seven minutes a game last year, up to 17 this year, right there at the, at the top of the list for most improved players. That turnaround will not go for Tatum. Childress looking to push. If I were Tatum, I might face up on that, try to take him off the dribble. Oh, Wilbekin from downtown. His first bucket, and it's a trade. Yeah, it's just unflappable. You know, he didn't. This wasn't a makeup for down at the other end. I mean, he is a terrific three-point shooter. This is going to be an outstanding finish. Kennard, that's going to be a foul. It goes against Mitchell Wilbekin. And it's a three-shot violation. Back after this word from your local ACC station. The Toyota Game Summary. For summaries of other ACC games, go to the Toyota Game Center on theacc.com. And uh, Kennard and Collins leading the way. Without Collins in the second half, it would really be problematic. And the free throw shooting story is the issue. Kennard getting uh, fouled on that last three-point attempt and uh, one of the better shooters from the line, the ACC, at 87%, so a gift there. In a lot of ways, the game has been disjointed, lacking uh, free-flowing tempo with a lot of fouls. But listen, when you're fouling, they're going to call them, and there were plenty of them in the first half, and they've continued for Duke in the second. That may be the real issue, Mike, is how well can they defend with the foul issues that they face, and, and you know that Danny Manning knows that they're going to attack all of the players that have four fouls, and for Duke, there are three of them. I mean, the question being, too, Tim, is uh, how, how long does Jeff Capel go with life without Grayson Allen yeah. on the floor? You know, he's had, he's had extended minutes uh, on the bench, and they're still using this kind of little mock trap three. And they just barely got it over that time as well, and, you know, just cuts off. 10 seconds that you can run your offense. They haven't even gotten into it yet, and there's 14 on the shot clock. Yeah, Jones, Jackson, and Tatum have really helped Duke here in the second half. Crawford from downtown. Well, he, he just he buried him out on a, on a possession that was going nowhere. I mean, that, that was just stagnant and a great shot. Grayson just got the call and is up at the scores table. He'll be in on the next dead ball. Tatum has it rejected by Collins. We're going to have the foul on yeah, Tatum. On Tatum. And that'll be his fifth, I believe. Yep, he's done. And Jeff can't believe it. Well, it's a terrific play by Collins initially to get the ball. And they're going to call that clear through. The elbow. Yep. Yep. Eight points, five boards, and 21 minutes for Tatum. Now Jefferson is going to come back onto the deck along with Grayson Allen. Jefferson playing with four fouls as well. I wonder if they're going to take a look at this to see if it was a flagrant or not. I think they are, and, and I believe that it, it isn't. I mean, he was in traffic. He turned. But, you know, in, in the world we live in today, anything up above the shoulders has yep. sometimes been called an F1. You see that what happened when the referee was screened out or you could make an argument that it was Childers on that initial one and then he reacts right. to it. Well, Childers also sold it pretty well and players know how to do that as part of the game. I don't think he had the room to extend his, his elbow. He just turned. But by the letter of the law, anything that happens above the shoulders, a lot of times these guys have been instructed to well, Throw in the F1. You can clear. You can clear above and, and below. It's you know when you do it through the 
kind of torso area. It looks like they're having a debate as to whether it should or should not be. Ted Valentine, Tim Nestor, Raymond Steins. You know, veteran crew without question. That's why they were assigned this game. They knew right away how much these two teams needed the game. Just a common foul, and I think that's yes. the way to go. I, I totally agree with that decision. Well, and the point is, he's gone anyway. Yeah. So he's, I mean, he's the, done. The, only, the only thing you wouldn't have got, you, you, you don't, you don't get free throws as a result. Right. right. But the net effect is him still being out of the game. Frank Jackson's on the floor with Kennard, Grayson Allen, Jefferson, and Matt Jones, the five for Duke. Childress running the show now with Collins, Crawford, Woods, and Wilbeckin. There's a beautiful pass to Collins. What a delivery by Childress. So they, run that, they run that pick and roll up top as well as any team in the league, and they do a great job of clearing out the help. And that bump by Crawford. And Kennard got hammered this it, time. It, not that it wasn't chippy already, but this finishes, and the, the referees are doing a pretty good job of policing this. Here's that look. You know, the, the roll, and there was really there was nothing Allen's going to do about that play. But I'm Danny Manning. I keep going back to that one. Crawford uh, got the foul, his second um, canard at the free throw line now for Duke. I've always been a big proponent, Tim. If you if you got something that's working, you keep, you keep going to it till the other team shows you they can stop it. For a big miss free throw in front end. Without a doubt. Because it's difficult to get stops down here against this high flying wake offense. They have uh, been very efficient once they've gotten started and initiated their offense early. Inside, outside. Too strong that time from Childress. And the rebound collected by Jackson. That three ball falls from the corner pocket. Beautifully done by Jones. Matt Jones, and then this is what you got to guard. You have to guard outside in against Duke right now. They've got four guys who are going to run to the three-point line. Alley-oop to Collins. Boy, Duke just fell asleep completely there. He's got 20. And Jeff Capel is going up and down the line saying, what am I going to do about this guy? Number 20 is pretty good. Offensive foul. They call that a Matt Jones. Yes, they did. Three on him. And the appeals process not going his way either. Remember I talked about that game where all five starters fouled out? Or Pushed off. Yeah, the elbow was and yeah, didn't I mean, really that, need it. That's a foul. That's just a foul. Period. Go back and play some defense. 5.15 remaining, and the lead is seven. Crawford. Allen had it, and he's quickly fouled by Keyshawn Woods. See, I think, you know, I had, they're I, still barking if, to one another if, here. If, I, if I'm Collins, I'm, de I'm demanding that ball because he's got a size advantage over Jefferson, and he had him on his back, and Crawford decided to take the shot. That time the dead ball conversation was between Crawford and Matt Jones. You're right, it's gotten chippy. Even from the distance that we are from the floor, and it's quite a ways, you can tell they're woofing. They are woofing a lot, and these officials have a really tall order, Mike, in the remaining time that we have. We are teetering on something really bad happening. Every dead ball situation when you see players with their heads turned talking to an opponent, it's a telltale sign. The lead is five with five to play. Nice job, but Jackson pushing up against Childress, making it a little more difficult for him to advance the ball.
Woods. Well, what a great play. It was a double high screen, and they rolled, they rolled Collins into the lane, and that left uh, Woods wide open. Allen. Wow, that was quick. Wow, that was quick. And then a frustration foul. And, uh, Here we go. Here we go. You could sense it. You could feel it. And it's now happening. Well, really nice job by the officials to get in and right in front of the Duke bench. And, uh, and also, Tim, I was watching really nice job by Wake's coaches to keep their bench under control. You see guys were wanting to run down the floor. I think, uh, I think that was that foul called on Crawford initially. Grayson Allen. Okay. He's guilty of the foul. Allen He's frustration. It's just total frustration. First off, a bad decision to take yeah, a shot. Yeah, there, there's the foul right there. Crawford. there. Yeah, there's I the mean, foul right there. Clear. I mean, and then and then of course Crawford and he had had it before. May have been a little bit of a chest bump there. And here we go. Won't take much from this point forward. But it was everything that was leading up to that that you could feel. And uh, you're right. Again, Danny Manning did a great yeah. job making sure that his team stayed on its bench. But that's a you know that's a situation where you know. Allen got to know better. Yeah. I mean, it's, it, yeah. It, just because of his, not only because of what has gone on before, but your situation in the game, and that's, a, that's an easy call for the referee to make. One thing to be competitive, and we know he is, and he was upset with himself because he took a poor shot, and he committed a foul that we've seen many times before. But there was no malice involved. And I think every time something with him happens, He's living in this unfair fishbowl where everyone wants to just hone in on him. I don't as unfair I, 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 as it no, may I, be. I don't think it is unfair to him. I really don't. I, I think he, you know he he has created that. But, uh, no, no, no. I'm with you there. I'm with you there. But what I'm saying to you is the fact that he he only missed one game and let's 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 take that and have our political conversations over whether that should or shouldn't happen. Let's, let's, let's play on. It's a college game. The kid's eligible. Let him play. That's what I'm talking about that's unfair. The fact that this has become a media circus yeah, is, is what I don't like. The fact that he committed the foul and that, that happened. There's no well, denying that. Well, then, then I guess what, what the call could be is a dead ball technical foul if they looked at that and saw that something happened after the whistle. Yeah. And that's what this conversation, I'm sure, is about. That's Woods coming in. Childress was on the other end. Now here's Childress. He, he comes in and grabs as though to take him away from a potential argument. So Allen credited with one of the fouls. And by the way, and Childress yes. gets a technical foul for coming over yeah. as he did. Contact technical foul. Nice job by our crew, Lonnie Dale. Dave Berger, our producer, because and I'm just going to tell everyone at home, this is an announcer's nightmare because if we were on the floor where we should be, we would be told by the officials what was going on every time there was a stoppage in play, but unfortunately well, uh, we're not. Well, just to, just to tell you to clarify that, Jim, that as soon as Danny Manning got this job, he wanted the broadcast booth back down on the floor. But that's uh, some pretty expensive real estate down there. And they got, you know, I understand. <laughs> but how many times do you sell out here? When they were good, they sold out. Yeah, well, I'm just saying. <laughs> Danny's right. We should be on the floor. Some some buildings like Cameron, a little different. Smaller location. We're trying to communicate and deliver the product as best we can. Well, Kennard has uncharacter uncharacteristically been a little dodgy at the free throw line. Five of nine. So here we are with 434 remaining, and the lead is eight, and a long stoppage Mike can play. Let's see if cooler heads can finally prevail. That uh, actually, it's a, a, a nice long breather for a lot of these players who have played heavy minutes. Collins almost got caught on the switch. 
and Kennard throws it away. A little miscommunication there between Kennard and Matt Jones. Yeah, that's, that's what's going to be their offense basically for the rest of this game, that drive and pitch game. That's 15 turnovers now for Duke. Collins flashes. Crawford decides to drive and is going to get a block. That was uh, Vrankovic coming over again. That gets him his fourth foul. Yet another top 25 team in trouble, but then again, Notre Dame losing. Right, that's yep. you go on the road in this league, it's going to be very, very difficult. Well, Miami, you went know with the final is, but North Carolina was getting mm -hmm. drilled by Miami earlier. And they wound up double digits. Virginia, by the way, has a big non conference game tomorrow against Villanova. Yeah, oh, by the way. Uh, I think we'll take the weekend off against a non conference <laughs> oh, and, and play the defending national champion. Yeah, why not? <laughs> you know, Kansas, Kentucky today. <laughs> A career high 26 for Crawford today. The lead is 10, four minutes left. That three goes crying. Great tap out by Grayson Allen to keep it alive in a recycle. Kennard for three. Count it. You don't have anybody who's going to clean the glass out there, you know, save for Jefferson or, um, or uh, Giles. But as a group, you can do that when you get tap outs and you get sometimes better looks at threes. 81-74. When you talked about it earlier, Mike, can they close it out? You know, that's been the issue with Wake all season long. And there's a clear out. Offensive foul that goes against Wake Forest, and that is Collins, his fourth. So he is one foul away from expulsion. Duke's got many that are teetering. In fact, the entire emotion of the game teetering here in Winston-Salem. Saving people money for over 75 years. By Food Lion, raising standards without raising prices. How refreshing by your local Chevy dealers, and by Mellow Mushroom. A gorgeous day outside here in Winston-Salem, North Carolina. Inside, <laughs> it's been rough and tumble. 81, glad to, uh, glad 74. Those, glad those two are getting along. Yeah. Nobody out on the court is. <laughs> Collins did pick up his fourth foul going to break for Wake Forest. So number 20 has to play intelligently the rest of the way. That three ball for Jones does not go. Allen oh, got away hits with a push. It. Yeah, he did. There was a push inside. A recycle here with the clock moving at 248. This is a seminal moment really for this Duke team in a lot of ways. Kennard, yes. See, there's that, there's that side dribble that I was talking about, Tim. I love that play because it doesn't, you get your defender lead his feet, but you still get the benefit of the three-point line. I think we have another situation where possibly the clock may have, I need to see if it was a three now. That's what we're being told. And yet again, uh, another stoppage of play. That's what they're checking. So it's not the clock. It's whether this was a three. That's a two. That is a two. He's left, left foot. And Raymond Steins was very wise to say, let's take a look. Yep. Good call by the officials. By the way, if Crawford gets to the line and makes two more free throws, he could break a record going all the way back. But Charlie Davis of Clemson. In 1970, and Paul Long in 67 from Clemson with 16 for 16 as a stripe. He could go 17 for that's 17. That's if he gets two more. Yeah, no, that's a, that's in the, they changed it from a three to a two. They did change it yep. from a three to a two. So there you have it. And a good call by Steins to stop the clock. To see, make by, sure that they went over there and made sure that it was a two rather than a three. Because he's a left-handed shooter, Tim. He squares up with his left foot ahead of his right foot, and uh, that's what got him over the line. 
It'll be interesting to see, Mike, how North Carolina State responds after their big win for Mark Godfrey at Cameron against number 13, Louisville, a team that prides itself on defense. That's tomorrow at 1 p.m. right here on many of these ACC network stations. You know, you, the thing you worry about, and it historically has shown that it's such an emotional, huge win for the Wolfpack. Can they come back from that? And, and, and it's not like they're playing a, no. you know, a gimme, <laughs> <laughs> you know. How do you uh, handle a full cup of success and on the road, too? Childress, Wilbekin, Crawford, Collins, all on the deck with Woods, the five for Wake Forest. Wake, Wake being very deliberate with the clock right now. Shot clock at three, Woods, oh, the bank is open! Late and early on a Saturday in Winston-Salem. A blow-by, not there. Jackson couldn't get it out of bounds to Duke. Now they can, boy, you know, I don't know if they, they can review this play under two minutes. And I think it's what they're going to do. They're going to go take a look at it. Danny wants them to. Yep. Boy, that's sometimes the, well, most of the time the backboard is your friend. <laughs> Certainly was the uh, uh. friend of a guy who was a superstar here and in the pros and Tim Duncan. Nobody used the glass better than him. Well, you're right about that. I think this was a, this was a great rule that was implemented. It and was, you know it was what? a game that we did in the NCAA tournament it was. that brought it about. It was a game between Miami and Illinois. Yep. In the second round of the NCAAs. So now that, I, th I think it looked like Woods might have gotten a piece of the ball coming through. Yeah, that was the call. It's got to be indisputable. Yep, I thought Woods got it. His hand was the one that came through there. That was the call that was made by Valentine. It should be accurate. Yeah, yeah they're going to give the give award to Ball to Duke. But I, I, again, I commend Danny Manning for asking for them yeah. to use it. You're under the two-minute mark. Absolutely. The rule was put there for a reason. <laughs> In that particular game, it really helped Miami, Larinaga's team, get to the Sweet 16 because Illinois was in a tremendous position to pull off an upset in the second round. 2013 that year. Kennard knocks it down with a three. And all it took was a little stumble. Collins tried to get out and get him, but uh, it, it gave Kennard enough time to shoot the three. And Now's when the dart. Now's when the doubt starts to creep yes, in indeed. a little bit. He's got 31. Luke Kennard, sophomore from Franklin, Ohio, is putting on a show and carrying Duke with all the foul problems of his teammates. Well, they're giving Childress control of the ball, letting the other guards be scores in this situation. A lot of pressure for the freshman. Crawford in trouble. Gives it to Wilbekin. Up against the clock. Another shot clock violation. And Capel's got to be pleased with the job done there. And now, Danny Manning's concerned that maybe there was a second left on that clock when it went out of bounds. We'd like to believe that there'd be time for a catch and shoot. And Raymond Steins is not going to allow him to look at it. All of a sudden, play coming in, and Jeff Capel wants a timeout. Danny felt that the ball went out of bounds before the shot clock went to zero. Take a look. That yeah, was a tough, long shot. No, it was clearly the ball was still in bounds when it yeah. went to zero. Good call. Remember, it has to hit out of bounds to be a dead, but not just break the plane. That's right. All right, so 115 remaining. Kennard has been your answer to this point. Sure, Jeff Capel is also talking defense as well as offense. Only one more timeout remaining for him. But it's been all Luke Kennard in the second half, Mike. Ten, and he's not, not have been a high volume shooter either, Tim. Ten of 13 from the floor. Five of five from the three point line. His only weak spot has been from the free throw line where he's normally pretty solid, but four assists, four rebounds. For him, uh, just a terrific overall line, and what it's what he did for this team early on in the year. Frank Jackson occupying the ball right now. Grayson Allen trying to run through some screens. 
Kennard gets a pick. One minute. Kennard drives, sets it up, Allen for three. He got it. 83-82, 52.5 remaining. Boy, and how about the extra pass by Matt Jones and the critical pass, and Kennard should get a hockey assist for that one, and Allen all wide open. Wake Forest once again trying to hang on. This is a uh, this is a mental health timeout for uh, and he's got to pump his team up. Re regardless, we get the score that you got to you know the Duke is going to get the last possession. Watch it here. When we talked about the drive and pitch, he gets a look inside. Never any panic here. Now drive and pitch again. And then uh, just you give him that much room. By the way, we should mention as they went back to the huddle, Kennard was limping after having made that pass to Grayson Allen. And behind the arc today, he's been perfect. Allen has launched 11 and hit five. And this is, you're right, it's a mental health situation for Wake Forest. What do you suspect is the out pitch for Danny here in terms of trying to get something well, solid well, and easy? Come well, on. it's, it's going to be it's going to be fascinating to see what Duke does. If Duke goes man, then I'm I'm, I'm probably setting up two things if I'm Danny Man. I'm setting up something against the zone, and then man, if it's man, I'm running Crawford and Collins in a two-man game right at the top of the key, get Collins rolling and give Crawford something going to the rim. Our performance of the game is brought to you by your local Chevy dealers. And Bryant Crawford has been that man for Wake Forest today. Career high 26, 15 of 15 at the line. That's one short of an ACC record in attempts and attempts made. Wilbekin will trigger it in. Bryant Crawford's got it. Working on Jones. They're fronting Collins. Giles is on him. Shot clock at five. Woods. It goes flying off the front iron. Giles oh. the rebound. And here comes Duke with a chance to win it with a two. Yeah, Their last can. lead was 18 to 17. Timeout. This would be a steal without question and one that comes at a seminal moment in the season for this Duke program that has really been on its heels. Yeah, and it's, you know, for for this Deacon program, it would have, you know, we're not this game far from over. And, um, but for this crowd, I mean, they really came out, um, you know, terrific atmosphere, how I remember Joel used to be. First sellout since yeah, 2009. Yep. So, you know, terrific from that, that standpoint, but uh, that's part of having a younger team is, is learning how to close out and learning how to win games like this. But that was just, that was terrific defense. The clock got down. I thought they'd go a little earlier on that and give themselves some time, but uh, terrific defense by Kennard. All right, a quick update tomorrow, 1 o'clock, most of these ACC network stations will have Dennis Smith, Jr. put on such a show at Cameron. They'll travel to Louisville to take on the 13th-ranked Cardinals for the entire ACC Network game schedule. We invite you to visit the ACC.com slash ACC Network. And remember that select ACC Network games are streamed live for free on the official ACC mobile app. What a day it has been. That uh, Viper pit down in McCamish now. <laughs> <laughs> All right, here we go. You got to figure right, Allen or Kennard. Put some pressure on the referees and get something driving to the basket. Frank Jackson operating. Kennard, the pop out for three. Got it! 6.6 .6 remaining. Timeout, Wake Forest. Thirty second half points for Luke Kennard. Thirty-four on the game. 
Well, here's the play, and uh, I mean, he's just been uh, on fire this whole afternoon and caught in rhythm coming into sweeping around into that left hand. You know, seeing that scene on the bench, the last time I saw that much passion was the second half of the Miami game. And, and uh, you know, and for, for Wake Forest right now, I mean, I don't, I don't think it's a decision. I think with the foul trouble that Duke's in, that you go for the tie in this situation and not the win. Duke is 17 of 27 from the floor, nine of 16 from three. Those are the numbers in the second half. Very efficient. Canard, 10 of 10. I mean, this is um, as that. close to perfection as you can have from one player to carry a Duke team as we've seen in way <laughs> Wait, wait, wait too many years. I'd like to see this rule change, too, where you could advance the ball to half court on a timeout in this situation. Woods will trigger it in. Crawford will take it. End to end. The runner, not there. Out of bounds. Point three, Duke will have it. Collins went down hard, yes, too. Yes, he did. Gave himself up. Came down on his shoulder. Tend to him. A surreal moment, really, for his teammates. Well, too. They're so concerned for his health. And yet, how deflating this must be for a team that had a really big lead lost here in the second half. You know, the Giles, you know, I don't know if Giles bothered that play just by going up for the block. This has been a 9-0 run in the last 2 minutes and 10 seconds for Duke. Well, and this is a shame, too, because there's, there's some debris being thrown down at the Duke section and near the Duke bench, too. And uh, the one thing I'm going to say here, that Harry Giles was barking at a fan going off the court. He's got to keep a cool head. You know where this referee team is here. Yep, yep. You don't want to do anything that might even cause a technical. And he's, he's not out on the... Yeah, he's right there, and so... Ball will be Dukes. They did check the monitor. All they've got to do is and he can, have uh, the ball touched. Matt Jones can run the baseline in this situation. And Duke does it. An incredible comeback win. Mike, I'm not sure when Coach K is going to come back. I've heard and talked to a number of people that there's a chance that he is getting better and uh, spiritually is certainly into it as much as any. We've, we've documented that in the last week or so. But this is the kind of game here that could ignite a club that's been without its coach and leader before he comes back. You know, I'm happy to Jeff Cable. Absolutely. I mean, they came out. They had a game plan in the second half. That zone really slowed Wake Forest down. And, uh, again, a heartbreaking loss and a lead given up at the, down the stretch. And they're just going to have to get through this. You know, and they're going to have to find a way to finish games. Deacons are good, really good, and getting closer to being great. But they're young. And the ability to finish games remains their issue. But for Duke... A proud program that knows how to finish at a time when they were in very, very much disarray defensively. They have eked out, managed to get a very important victory for them. 85 to 83. And wasn't it about a year ago we were saying the same thing about Jim Beheim's team? And look at, look at what happened. I think Luke Kennard is down there ready to chat with us. Luke, congratulations on the victory. Tim Brando along with Mike Jeminski. Is that as good a half as you've ever played at any level of basketball, 10 of 10 from the floor? Uh, man, I don't know about that, but, uh, man, it's, I, I'm kind of speech, speechless right now. I mean, the way our team fought, the way that our team battled together, the, the pride that we showed wearing this, this, this name across our chest, man, it meant something today. It meant something today, and, and we really believed that. We believed in each other. Um, you know, we, we weren't ready to play at the beginning of the game, but I'm telling you, the second half is – that's the team that we can be, and that's the team we want to be, and we're, we're going to continue to work that way. Luke, I don't know what the, what the matter was. You missed three shots today from the field, and you were perfect from three. 
when do you get a sense you're having an afternoon like this or an evening like this? How early on in the game? Um, I mean, you got to get some. You got to get some ball movement on, on the offensive end, and, and we shared the ball well. We, we shared the ball as a group, um, and you know, I, I was just kind of, I was just kind of feeling it. I was hitting shots, and we did a great job of, of finding an open man and making the extra pass. And um, but man, I'm just, I'm just so proud of these guys the way that we fought today. Well, it's not my decision, but you might have earned your Duke gear back in your locker room. <laughs> I'm not, I'm not. It's, again, it's not my decision, but uh, it's, you guys made a, a great. You guys showed a lot of heart in that second half. Yes, sir. I think we did too. It, it was great. We're gonna go. We're gonna go enjoy it right now. But we got, we got to get ready for the next one. Next one's yep. a big one. Um, but we're gonna enjoy it right now, and, and we're gonna be ready to go. Luke, congratulations on the victory, and we'll be seeing you real soon and uh, I'm sure this is one you guys will look back on maybe in a few weeks and say that's when we really got our motor running to head to the month of March. Many thanks. Yes sir I appreciate it. Thank you guys so much. All right Luke Kennard 34 points 10 of 10 from the floor in the second half he was perfect from downtown. And it was you know it was a smaller lineup um, a lot of foul trouble uh, I, you know that you can't speculate but uh, they might have been some real issues if this game had gone into overtime. Yeah Yep. But, uh, boy, they, they just kept making shot after shot after shot. And, uh, you know, terrific effort. Because, like I said, reminiscent of the second half of the Miami game. A lot for them to build on. Duke's issues remain on the defensive end without question. But the kind of victory that could maybe vault them into a position where they can be, once again, Duke. For highlights and must-see moments from this game and others, check out the ACC.com. Our next telecast on most of these ACC network stations is tomorrow at 1 Eastern, number 13, Louisville host NC State. Today's game produced by Dave Beringer, directed by Lonnie Dale. For Mike Jeminski, Tim Brando saying so long, you've been watching the ACC Network, an exclusive production of Raycom Sports.